podcast tonight, West Indies Oil Company CEO explains why gas and diesel prices have risen despite crude oil prices being lower than they were years ago. The fire department gives all clear to recently acquired fire tender following test. A special outreach initiative warms hearts on this Father's Day. And one of this country's centenarians marks another milestone. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Weoc CEO Gregory George says fuel prices in Antigua and Barbuda vary based on changes in the government's fuel consumption tax or the product price for Weoc's refined fuel imports. George says the recent rise in fuel prices is due entirely to increases in the price of the imported fuel. The CEO says the war in Ukraine and other global factors have led to demand far outstripping supply for oil-based products. But what has happened and what is, what is unprecedented is that for the first time, we are seeing crude prices, not at record levels, but the prices at the pump at record levels. George says this is because refineries have significantly increased their profit margins. The refiners are essentially printing money at this time. Their margins are very high because of this supply and demand, a lack of, of, of refining capacity, a lot of refineries have closed down. So I can give you numbers, for example, a year ago, the refiner's margin was in the region of about $9 uh, a, a barrel. Today, fast forward a year, it's in excess of $43 a barrel, so it's gone up what, over four times. And the same thing in diesel, even worse. Diesel, you're looking at a price, a refining margin of, of, of $6 a year ago, you're looking at approximately $51 today. The result, drivers all over the world paying more at the pumps, even though unrefined oil is cheaper than years ago. Looking at our situation in Antigua, we can go back to May 2011, for example, where a barrel of crude was in the region of $140 a barrel, but our cost of bringing the product in, our product price was in approximately $11 DC per gallon. Fast forward to June 2022, where the world price, the crude price, is $120 a barrel, but yet our cost of bringing product into Antigua per gallon is in excess of $14 a gallon. Over the past few months, the Antigua and Barbuda government has reduced its consumption tax on fuel to ease the burden on consumers. To the point where it was actually negative, and they have to actually pay West Indies oil um, that difference because of the negative um, to, to, to fund that shortfall. Georges was speaking during an interview last Thursday, three days after the country's latest increases at the pumps. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. And of course, we do apologize for the audio difficulty we were experiencing earlier, but you just heard from West Indies Oil Company Chief Executive Officer Gregory Georges uh, explaining what has driven the recent increases in the price of fuel at the pumps in Antigua and Barbuda. Of course, this comes following last Monday's price increase. Now, in another, on, in other news here for us, the St. John's Fire Department has added a, recent, a recently acquired fire truck to its fleet of tenders. And uh, we learned that a release uh, from the Public Safety Ministry says firefighters gave a passing grade to the recently acquired truck following testing. The release adds that the fire department will receive two fire tenders from the United States within two weeks and three purchased out of England are expected to arrive mid-July. Also here for us tonight, a male quad driver escaped serious injury after a collision with a bus at Big Creek Sunday morning. 
Although the driver was transported to hospital, his injuries are not considered to be life-threatening. Reports are that the man was traveling from north to south at a high speed when the collision occurred. He was thrown from the quad during the crash. And the Rotary Club of Antigua can now support more people on its bed at home program. The club recently added six beds to the program after insurance company Sajiko donated more than $16,000 to the initiative. The bed at home program provides hospital type beds for residents who are confined to their beds. The club says the electronic beds will provide care flexibility for the beneficiaries and their caregivers. Sajiko representative Marisa, Marisa James says the insurance company is happy to be associated with the initiative. Rotary Club of Antigua President Shamari Spencer says senior club members selected the beneficiaries after a needs assessment. Now the beds have a lightweight, full rail, adjustable electrical unit along with a mattress, crank and battery backup in case of power failures. The user can adjust the bed with a hand pendant that has large and easy to use controls. The Rotary Club of Antigua has so far assisted over 40 families through its bed at home program and now has 26 beds in rotation. The club also thanks West Indies Oil Company for storing the beds. Now, Andrew Insurance, which funded Friday's lunch, Adopt a Family Food Kitchen, says it's working on additional ways to give back to society. Office manager Harry Hobson says the insurance company recently sponsored a major sports fishing tournament and is working to resume its support to the school's tournament. Meanwhile, we were a little bit dormant for a while, but um, negotiations are presently on hand to revive in that initiative. We know that the, the, we strongly believe in sports and development of sports and youth. So uh, that is something that is on the cards. We have, as I said, we have been discussing with the ministry and with our head office. Because the idea is, at the end of the day, we want to be able to produce more cricketers, more Alzari, more Wrigley, more Kirtley, and Seville, and the rest of it. Meanwhile, Hobson hints that the company is about to make a major announcement. There are some things, big things happening very soon for the company. And we are hoping that um, within the next week or two, we'll be able to roll them out. But at this point in time, I don't want to to drop the bomb at this point, but um, just to say to all Massey and Andrew customers that um, it won't be long before you're hearing from us. Florence Johnson of Gambles is now 101 years old. Johnson, who's better known as uh, Adam A, celebrated the milestone with family and friends on Sunday. Deacon Patrick Benjamin of the Holy Family Cathedral gave the celebrant the Holy Communion after offering prayers and words from scriptures. I feel great and with all these everybody around me son, grandson, great grandson or whoever makes me feel good. I feel happy having all your having all of you around. Johnson was born in Liberta in 1921 and later attended the Grace Hill Government School while living with her adopted aunt. Johnson served in the local education sector for some 52 years and in 2017 the government named her an officer of the most illustrious order of merit OM for distinguished contribution to technical and vocational education. She has given us pride, faith, and a lot of licks because she was a stern teacher, you know, going through foundation mixed school. Johnson, who lives, uh, who loves to sing and dance, sang uh, in choirs uh, such as the Spring Gardens Senior Choir, the Community Players, and the St. Joseph's and Holy Family Cathedral Church Choirs. She married the late Walter R. Johnson in the 1950s 
and the union produced six sons, Maurice, who is uh, deceased, uh, Costain, Lentworth, Carol, Michael, and Patrick. They also had uh, an adopted son, Ivor James, deceased, Johnson, has several grandchildren. And it is Father's Day after all, and on this Father's Day, one entity has chosen to show appreciation to fathers of children with disabilities. Camp Exceptional, which caters to these children, embarked on a special initiative which made the day even more special for the dads. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. On behalf of Camp Exceptional, I'd like to present you this token to say Happy Father's Day, Thank and you. especially for being there for a child who is challenged. Showing appreciation on Father's Day, founder of Camp Exceptional, Camelita Archibald, remembers a number of fathers who have been playing a special role in the lives of their children with disabilities. Brian Challenger is one of those fathers. I'm overwhelmed, you know, it's um, such a wonderful gesture, you know, and it's a, it's a privilege for me to have my daughter, you know, and um, it's just a joy. This, this moment makes, makes me feel very happy. I thank you and your, your, your team so much for that thoughtfulness. And um, just wish all the fathers, remember that love is the most important thing, particularly with children like these, you know. People like these, because they don't name children, they grow up to become adults, you know, and the love is what really strengthens them and, and gives them the ability to, to flourish. Archibald has been working along with children with disabilities for several years with Camp Exceptional. She says there's been a pattern where fathers are absent in the lives of disabled children. And on Father's Day, it is only fitting to appreciate those who are playing that pivotal role in their children's lives. And when it comes to children who are challenged, uh, a lot of times they, the fathers take off and leave the mothers to handle the children and it's very tough. So when you find that their father's involved, it's special. Derek Ramsey and Ludolf Brown were recipients of gifts from Camp Exceptional. They are grateful. It's not easy being the father of a special needs child. It's tough sometimes. Um, Things with Terrell, he has he was diagnosed first with cerebral palsy and then we got him re-diagnosed for autism. So it's a challenge. He used to talk and then all of a sudden he just stopped. Kamali has really done some work with him through um, yeah. camps and stuff. Uh, and it, it has helped. It really has helped. So once again, thank you. And I will continue to do what I have to do for my prince. This is a pleasant surprise, you know, because no one outside of the family has ever done something like this before. And um, I would like to say to the fathers out there, no matter what the situation is, always be there for your children. My son here, special need, you, know, you will not know unless you have interaction with him. But it, it, it has been both he and I from oh, the, when he was like four months of age, now he's 24. The world celebrates them on this Father's Day, but to their families, they are their world. Terry Andrew, ABS News. That's how we come to the end of our local segment on the ABS Evening News on this uh, Sunday night. It is Father's Day around the world, and a happy Father's Day to all on the sound of my voice. All right, Jack Matthews.